All right, y'all, so in my garage, about to embark on switching out my axle on my trailer. So what I've done right now is that I've got some, uh, I've got four, um, what do you call them? I got four jacks, two of them are six ton and two of them are four ton. Um, it looks like it's about 17 or maybe like 16 inches um, from the frame off the bottom of the trailer to the top. So something like a two and a half ton jack is probably gonna be too small. Um, this is a two and a half ton. So I went ahead and got a four ton, which extends to, where are those boxes? So the four ton, let's take a look at this. So I think a four ton, something like this, would be able to work because that extends from 13.8 inches to 20 and a quarter. So if you look down here, you can see that, let's see if I can get my tape measure out. So if you're looking over here, this is about 16 and a half, 16 and three quarters. That's about how much distance you have here. So something like a four ton jack would definitely work because that extends all the way to 20 and a quarter. But they only had two of these at the store. So I ended up getting two six tons. So I've got two six tons and two four tons. And this one extends all the way up to 23 and 15, uh, 15 sixteenths. So um, this would be more than enough. But if you just wanted to get some simple jacks, this four ton here should be able to do it for you. The two and a half, two and a half ton only extends up to 17. So you'd be maxing this out. And when I'm working with these things, I really don't want it maxed out all the way to the top. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use the four tons and the six tons. But you would just need six tons or the four tons to do this. So what I've done here is that I've got a jack stand over here. I jacked up the front with the tongue jack as high as it would go. And then I placed these jacks underneath. After I did that, I lowered that jack so that it would be sitting on this. I didn't lower it all the way to the point that it's actually... Um, not making contact. So it's making contact with the ground ever so lightly. So I didn't want it all the way up. So I have, you know, another point of contact right there. So that's good. But the majority of the weight, or all of the weight is hanging on these right here. So before you jack it up, of course, you want to loosen your bolts, which I've already done. And uh, that's just a three quarter inch socket wrench that goes on that. So over here, I've got this two and a half ton jack which also came with those two and a half jack stands I just showed you. And as you can see, this is completely maxed out and it's not even lifting the trailer. So once again, a two and a half jack is not gonna work for this. So fortunately, I've got a bigger one. I've got a three ton jack back there. So I'm gonna grab that and uh, that should be able to get us going here. So I'm gonna jack it up on one side and then extend the jack stand. And if you can see on the other side over there, I already have the jack stand back there set up already so it's going to catch it as i'm jacking it up so it doesn't try to tilt that way so i'll jack up this side put the jack stand on then i'll take uh the jack onto the other side and i'll do the same thing and then extend the jack stand at that point so let's see i think that's about it and as far as these are concerned these are six ton and i've got about three of the grooves they are showing so that's the setting i've got that on on the six ton, so let's get this going. All right, so here's my three ton jack, and you can see even it is almost, well, it's not maxed out yet, but it's, you know, pretty close um, to being maxed out. So I'm gonna lower it now so it sits on the jack, and I've got just enough room underneath here to spin the tire. You don't wanna go crazy, crazy high or anything like that. So that's about enough right there to remove the tire. So I'm gonna lower this, then I'm gonna to go to the other side and do the same thing, and then sit it up on the jack on that side as well.
All right, so now we're standing on the jacks on all four corners. On these four tons here, I've got that many teeth showing, so that's basically three showing. Uh, if you're counting those little protrusions right there, that's three showing on each side. I could have gone up one more because I am barely off the ground. So it's gonna take some finagling to get this tire off. If anything, maybe I'll have to jack it up a little bit more just to, just one more rung. So just have four showing over here, I think would do the trick. But for right now, we're gonna leave it like that and see if we can get this tire off and uh, look at the brake situation because I believe those brakes are gonna have to come off as well because the new axle is likely not gonna come with uh, brakes on it. So, or maybe it will. I'm not sure since I don't have the axle yet, so. All right, so I've pulled off the tire here. It's just five bolts and they're all 15 millimeter. And so that's all off now. So just pull that out of the way. And then if you come underneath here, you can see where it was kind of rubbing. It's not dented or anything. It's just that this undercoating, whatever stuff that, it, that they had on here is just kind of worn off. So that's where that comes from right there. But you can always just easily paint that. Um, and then if you come underneath here, you can see this is the brakes, the electromagnetic uh, magnetic brakes that these trailer has on it. And it's kind of just wrapped in this sheathing right here. So if you pull that out, you can kind of see where they've previously joined them. So if you're going to replace your brakes, like the whole brake system, which means the drum and the pads that actually go inside all this whole mechanism right here, it would come with a strand of wire, like two wires sticking out of it like this. And as far as I understand it, the wires don't matter. Like, as you can see here, they're both green. So it doesn't matter whether this goes here or that goes there. So what we're gonna do is try to take them off as gently as possible so that we don't end up having to waste any wire here. So I'm gonna try to just uh, get some pliers and recrimp these the opposite way so the wires hopefully just kind of slip out. And the reason we take this off or disconnect it is because if you're looking at the axle, so this is the axle, right? We're going to have to remove this bolt, which again is a 15, um, I keep saying 15, three quarter inch. Same thing with uh, the lug nuts here, three quarter inch socket. So these are three quarter inch. And so you're going to have to remove that. And there's a similar one on the other side right here. So you remove those two and... I believe this axle just falls down. The problem though is that this cable is routed through this bracket here on the axle. So they don't come, if you try to drop the axle with this still connected, it's gonna rip this cable off. So you kind of have to uh, break off that zip tie and remove, uh, undo these two uh, bunt connections right here. And then at that point, you can drop the axle, pull the cable through, from this, uh, from the other end and just pull it through and then uh, the axle can come down. So as far as the axle is concerned, I've got my three ton jack here, uh, just kind of holding it. It's not pressed up against it or anything like that and you should never jack things up by the axle. Well, not this trailer anyway, or not these kinds of axles. They're not made to support the weight of the vehicle. Um, in that fashion. So what I'm doing there is just kind of putting the jack on there, just ever so lightly holding onto it so that when I loosen this, this, and the two on the other side, it kind of catches it so it's not just falling down to the floor. So I'm gonna do one side and once that's done, I'm gonna carefully do the other side while trying to balance the axle on that jack so it doesn't just come tumbling down. What that looks like, again, step number one, undo these connections, all right? And then once that's loose, undo the four bolts that are holding the brake system, which means the drum and the brake components in there, to the axle itself, right? So pull that off, and then at that point, drop the axle. All right, so that's it. All right, so what we have right now is that I've removed the nuts that go on these bolts, and they are 11 sixteenths. Uh, this, so you just need a wrench, kind of like that, to get them off. All right, so over here on the axle, after you've removed the wheel here, you see this little piece of rubber right here. This is what you would remove if you wanted to grease your axles. So you can see the Zerk fitting right there. And that's where you'd be able to uh, put some grease in there for, 
full maintenance. And uh, yeah. All right, so at this point, you want to remove uh, this cap right here. And to remove that, you just got to hammer it with a mallet, and then that should come off. I didn't have a mallet, but I had this here stick that has two rubber ends on both sides. So I just kind of put it on there and I hammered it from the other side. So as you can see, it's kind of cracking open right there. So yeah, so as you can see, it's starting to come off right here. So I just need to continue hammering it uh, nice and gently. It doesn't take a lot of strength and then that'll come off. All right, so once that cap comes off, that's it right there. So you can destroy it if you want to, but if you want to reuse it, you may want to kind of gently tap it. As you can see, it's pretty strong and you're not going to damage it if you use a rubber mallet. So that's still good right there. Place it off to the side. And then what we have here now is a cotter pin, which is this little guy right here. So we just got to undo that. And I should grab a rag just to stop grease and whatever else not from falling onto the ground here. So let me find a pair of pliers. So this is the cotter pin right here. So you just wanna open it back up. All right, straighten it out. Unless you got some replacement cotter pins, you're gonna to wanna to reuse this. So try not to destroy it, but So, kind of like so, then you should be able to grab it from the other side. And pull it out. And that's it right there. So, uh, put that down right there. And at this point, you want to remove this castle net, uh, castle nut right here and it's it's hand tight so it's not even on there very tight so just remember that when you're putting it in is that you don't want to put it on there too tight so that just kind of screws off um, I can grab same channel lock pliers extend them a little bit kind of like so and then just kind of work on removing that I'm actually gonna grab some gloves because it's loose enough that I can actually do it by hand. All right, so I couldn't find my gloves. I don't know who comes in and takes my stuff away, but um, just got a napkin here and I'm just turning this castle nut. And you can kind of tell it's called a castle nut because it kind of looks like a castle. Um, so remove that the rest of the way. Trying not to get grease on your hands, but that's it right there. And we'll put it off to the side. And then at this point, there's going to be some bearings in here. So there's a washer. That's the washer that you can see right there. And then it's hiding some bearings. So as we pull this thing off, you want to make sure you catch that. And I'm not going to be able to do this with one hand, but you want to catch these bearings right here hmm. without getting grease on your hands like I did. So that's the washer closest to my hand and those are the bearings. So we're just gonna put that off to the side once again. You can see that over there. And then at this point, this can just come off. So I'm gonna try to do this. So it's not that heavy, but that's it right there. That's a brake drum. So we'll take that, put that off to the side once again, over here. So that's what it looks like on the other side. There's also some other bearings on this end of it. So that's the end that's kind of towards the vehicle. So, and this is what it looks like in here. If you wanted to change your brake assembly, this is the brake assembly right here. So 
Um, this is the little magnetic thing or the magnet or piece of metal that gets powered when you hit the brakes and then that kind of causes this contraption here to kind of pull and uh, it pushes the brakes it pushes the brakes outwards and that's what makes contact these are the brake pads that's what makes contact with the inside walls of the drum in here and that's how you're able to stop so anyways this is not a brake lesson so let's see we also loosen the bolts in the back, so we should be able to just pull this off like so, and then just put that off to the side. In there, just, and that is the axle right there. So this is the one we're replacing. And at this point, uh, you can see that this is being held on uh, just by these two bolts down here. So we'll remove those and this axle should be able to drop on this side And then we'll just repeat the same process on the other side, All right? All right, so a size 15 or size three-quarter socket you remove these Five of them. Get those off. And then just tilt that a little bit because I didn't uh, raise that too far up. And what I like to do with these tires, I like to just put them underneath the vehicle. That case, in case it folds, there's at least another point where it kind of catches. So I just kind of lay that on its side. Just a little cap that goes with it. And I slide it underneath and that's where I got the other tire underneath there as well so um, now that we got that off what we'll work on doing now is removing this cap right here and we can just do that grab my rag here so when it falls grease and it goes onto the floor it doesn't kind of splatter grease all over and uh, a mallet is what usually works for this but I don't have a mallet, so I'm just gonna use this. So I'll grab that. Kinda hit it. All right, it totally flew off and splattered a little bit of grease, just like I was trying to avoid. So I'll have to just wipe that off. Um, so I'll move you guys in a little bit closer. So now you can kind of see what we're working on here. Okay. So now there's a cotter pin in here that we got to remove. So I'll grab my channel locks and I can just kind of grab this. There's tons of grease in here. Grab that, straighten it out, and then kind of push it down so I can see where it's coming out of, which is down here. Lord, there is a lot of grease in here. But that's it down here. And that's the cotter pin right there. Put that off to the side. And then now you'll have this castle nut, which is just hand tight. So you can just kind of easily take that out. All the while being careful not to get grease all over the place. There's way more grease in this one than, than there was on the other side. And so take that off. Like that, and that's a castle nut. Named that because it looks like a castle. Um, and move the light a little bit. That's a little bit better. So castle nut, put that right down there. And then now this brake drum should come off. But as you're removing that, there's a, a washer 
that you see right there. And then in front of that washer is uh, some bearings. So you wanna be sure that that doesn't fall onto the ground and have bearings go running everywhere. Every in which where, oh, everywhere. So I'll move that a little bit and I'll put the screwdriver right here so I can kind of catch, catch that as it folds off, kind of like that. So that's the bearings and that's the washer. Slide that onto there. Wrap the grease off my gloves. Touch the other grease and completely negate what I was trying to do. All right, so at this point, pull this off. Just like that, and that's your brake drum. And we can put that off to the side. All right, so now what we gotta do is um, there's bolts on the back of this. So we're gonna take off four bolts, which is one, two, three, four. We'll loosen the four of those, and then this plate here, this brake assembly comes off. And then we also need to cut these wires. These are the wires that control the magnet. So they come out on the other end, and I showed you earlier on in the video. So we'll cut those out in the back here, and then we'll be able to take that whole assembly out. So, and then, We'll get in here and kind of see what we're working with. So these are the bolts that we need to remove and the size of those is 11 16 So I've got my wrench here. And if you got power tools, of course, that helps a lot. So bolt and a little lock washer right there. All right, so now this wire here that you see here is the one that is for your brakes. So we'll have to cut this. And if we look in here, there's a pos we're gonna have to remove this tie right here. So we'll break that off. Just like that. And then we kind of open up this sheath sheathing right here and then you'll see some connectors that are over here. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna cut these in the center because there's no way of really removing them neatly. So you can uh, just aim for the center, cut that off. Same thing with this, center, and cut that off, all right? And then this just kind of comes off. So these wires here, so the, the white is the ground and this blue right here is the, the positive but it doesn't really matter when you're connecting them to this. So uh, either or works. All right, so you don't have to worry about making sure, you don't have to worry about making sure that this goes one place or the other or so you can flip them, flip them around. So that's that. Okay, so now that those wires are cut, this kind of just comes off and lay that to the side. And uh, now we're ready to remove these nuts over here, which are just uh, three quarter, which are just three quarter inch uh, nuts. So I'll move my light again back here. Move that over there. Wrench to hold down on the other side while you're taking this off, otherwise it's just gonna spin. 
right. So the same socket we used for the tires, that's that over there. We should be able to fit this over there. And then, right here. So have you seen that? Over on the other side. So, okay, this is, I should have been looking more at this and not just filming. So on this side, it looks like you don't have to cut these brakes at all, but which is totally fine, whatever. Uh, Cause this actually runs above the axle. On the driver's, um, the driver's side, it runs right in between here. Um, if you can see this, it runs through the axle, kind of like through this hole right here. So you kind of have to cut it. So I didn't have to cut this on the side. So I just uh, added a bunch of work for myself. So hopefully this helps somebody who's watching at home not to make the same mistake. So. So that comes out like that, washer on one side, washer on the other side, and it kind of just sandwiches like so. This one here too. So we'll loosen the other side and uh, see if that doesn't uh, give it some, start giving it a little bit of play. And I'll lower the jack too a little bit. So. So that's off now on this side. And these axles are full of grease. So I'm gonna grab something just in case it comes down to kind of uh, stop it from hitting the ground. All right, so it looks like it's free. So we're gonna go back and loosen the last bolt on the other side and uh, we should be able to get this off. Yeah, so I believe this is loose now. I'm gonna lower the jack a little bit and I will position you guys over here so you can watch the drama unfold. Are we recording? Yes, we are. Okay. So I'm going to lower the jack here slowly. All right. So you can see it's coming down. And I'm just trying to hold it up here. This is kind of helps if there's two people at this point. And then we should be able to just wheel this axle out from underneath the vehicle.
All right, so basically that's how you take out that axle. Honestly, it didn't take very long at all. I would say, I don't know, if you had a couple of hours, you could easily take the axle down and put in a new one and be done with that. Not a great experience getting that axle in. Matter of fact, it's uh, Thursday night right now. The axle was supposed to arrive Wednesday night, but XPO has been having issues of their own. So I'm actually not going to be able to get that until like midnight. I had to go to XPO and say, hey, I really need my axle. So they said the night shift comes on. And then at that point, hopefully I should be able to get the axle. So I'm just going to drive down there and go pick it up myself. But this axle here is about 200 pounds, so it's not too heavy to pick up. And I've got a truck, so I can just load it up on there. Um, so I'm going to go pick that up and then install that. And uh, hopefully that goes as easy as it was to take this down. So that is, uh, yeah, that's coming up. Stay tuned. And then, um, yeah, so we'll just end this video right here. And then we'll do the next video as the actual installation of the off the axle just so you guys have some kind of material until I get that. All right, peace.